Hey guys, my name is Ryan Nigro and happy Thursday to you. So just to save you all time, right? I know some of you are just looking for the solution. I'll put timestamps in it at, at the bottom in the description um, to show you where to jump to if you just want to see how I protect against cross-site scripting. Um, but what, what I plan about talking about today, what the itinerary is, is I want to talk briefly about cross-site scripting, what it is, why it's important, why you should care. Then I'm going to actually set up a web form in Visual Studio, which we see on the screen. And it's going to be vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to show you some less malicious but still concerning attacks that you can run um, to test your, your own website. Lastly, I'm going to show you actually how to, how to fix it uh, or how to protect against it rather because you, you can't ever 100% protect against anything, I guess. And yeah, that, that's what we're going to do. So let's jump right into it. So cross-site scripting. Sounds really scary. It is pretty scary. It's a computer security vulnerability. It's mostly in web applications, right? And basically what it's doing is it, it's allowing attackers, it's allowing malicious actors to, to put their malicious scripts into your web pages, which for you all, if you're trying to make an ASP.NET web page, is not good. So it's a, it's a vulnerability that, that they'll sometimes use to bypass certain access controls and, um, or, or other times try to, to get onto other people's computers, right? And in 2007, this is outdated, but I'll show you the OWASP top 10 in just a second. In 2007, it was actually documented that 84% of all security vulnerabilities documented by Symantec were cross-site scripting, which is insane. Now, if you say, hey, Ryan, and I say, hey, back, and you say, well, that's not really relevant, you'd be right, or not really uh, relevant to today. But if, as I'm showing right here, this is the actual OWASP top 10. This is um, from 2010 to 2013. Cross-site scripting was pretty high up here, right? Or no, that's cross-site forge. It's, act, it's like uh, the third one, the third top security vulnerability. And once I show you how to protect against it, it really isn't all that tough. And, uh, you know, it bumped down a little bit, but it's still in the top 10, right? Which is crazy because input validation, which also kind of pertains to SQL injection, but I'll have a completely separate video to show you all how to protect your ASP.NET attack against that. Um, it, it's pretty crazy considering the measures you can take to protect against cross-site scripting. So let's X out of this and let's begin. So I'm going to first make an empty uh, ASP.NET website. And I didn't do that right. I'm going to do file, file, new, project, uh, ASP.NET empty website. That's what we want. And I'm going to name it uh, website. Ooh, okay, so I already have one named website. So I'm not very creative. Uh, I'm going to name it website. 14. Now, obviously, if this is a real project you're working on, you're probably going to want to be a little bit more intuitive with your names. Don't take up after me on that. I'm just very lazy. So now it's loading. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we have an empty website all here. We're going to want to do file, new, file. And we're going to put our first web form up. And let's name this web form vulnerable uh, to, to, to attack. Um, and we're gonna set that up. So now what we see is we see the, the HTML code for that web form. And if we look at the design view, this actually gives us a little preview of it. Um, instead of typing this in HTML and taking up everyone's time, I'm just gonna use the toolbox. And if you don't have the toolbox up, you can just go to view, scroll down and click on toolbox and it'll pop up. I'm gonna need three elements. I need a text box. I need a submit button or just a button here. We're gonna drag that under. And then lastly, I need a label. So the setup here, and I'm just going to change this to submit to be clear. The setup here is when I type something into the text field, when I click submit, the label will show just exactly what would be sent to a database or just exactly what text would actually be, be accepted, right? So the idea here is if we run this, um, Ooh, actually, I didn't, I didn't set up the C-sharp code, so let me just cancel out of this. So first, what we're going to want to do, right, is we actually need to wire up that button. Visual Studio is really nice and intuitive, where if you double-click on this uh, submit button, it actually creates a method for you, right? And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to make our label. I didn't name it, so by default, this label one. Label one.txt, so we're getting the text element of label one. We're going to want to make that equal to our text box dot text. Right. So on button click, when we click the submit button, our label text is made equal to our text box text. And let's see that in action. I'm going to click play. This is automatically going to pop.
pop up Microsoft Edge and I'm gonna type in Ryan right that's my name click submit and as we see the label changes to Ryan now if I was creative and maybe you know malicious I would type in an HTML element and see what happens there right so ideally when I type in this right we have the HTML element for for bolding text when I type this in it should output this directly under here and let's see if it does that now we actually see a check that Visual Studio has in place for their um, for their ID where it won't let you do that it'll say potentially dangerous request form which is good but we want to make sure that when we deploy our website that we have our own checks in place so I'm actually going to disable this really quickly so I'm going to go back to the ASPX so I'm going to go to the source code and up here right where we're defining the web page I'm going to do validate request equals to false so this no longer will validate my input uh, and basically once we implement our fix we're going to want to take that out right because ideally it's better to have that check than not um, but we want to make sure we have our own checks in place so let's type in Ryan yep it still works and now let's be malicious we're going to type that bold element and see what happens up oh, and as we see instead of actually pasting uh, less than sign B greater than sign right we actually have our our uh, text changing and that's actually pretty problematic right so this may seem kind of benign because it's just bolding an element but what if we have something like like this I'm just gonna copy and paste for time's sake and basically what this is it's a script that will pop up an alert so we're gonna click submit oh my gosh wow so a text box comes up which you know once again it seems silly because all I did was put get wrecked brother uh, but for people who are potentially more creative and probably more malicious than I am this is a huge security vulnerability right this is a huge attack vector for them they could they could abuse the they could abuse this to the max right so we actually want to prevent this and we're gonna do that right now in our C sharp code so let's go back we're gonna go into our C sharp code and it's so so simple so basically what we're gonna to want to do is we're gonna make instead of label dot text equal to text box dot text we're gonna do HTTP um, utility right dot HTML and code and we're gonna do now we're gonna do text box one dot text and basically what this is doing in plain text right and there's actually a great Wikipedia article on this what exactly this does character encodings in HTML I'm not gonna to talk too much about this um, basically what this is doing is that it's actually validating the input it's making sure that all of the really dangerous characters such as the uh, like the less than and greater than sign and you know the uh, the commas or the dashes right it's making sure all those are interpreted literally instead of in a you know a script sort of way and once again that Wikipedia article probably will say that in a much more eloquent way than I ever could so let's see what what happens when we do this now so now if I if I paste in that malicious script and click submit it actually just sends this right so it doesn't perform the script which is thousands of times better right and it, it actually just takes it as if it was text instead of like some malicious thing and let's try that one more time with the the bold element just see what happens there um, so let's do B Ryan B and it, it reads it literally instead of as a command right so that is how to defend your your ASP.net site I'm gonna put a link to the, the Wikipedia page uh, on just exactly what HTTP, HTTP encoding does or HTTP utility does uh, yeah and, and just one last thought um, so basically just make sure that whatever it is whatever text you have being sent to the server or being being sent into the website is validated and this is one way in which you can validate that text and this is really nice that Visual Studio has this uh, because now you don't have to write your own your own method to do that uh, so this is just a really simple and easy way to actually protect against that so thank you all for watching uh, next video I'll probably go into SQL injection attack and kind of play around with with one way to defend against those using parameterized queries um, and if you if you like the video leave a like if there's something else you'd like to see leave a comment and uh, Thank you. I hope your, your Thursday is incredible.